this is what we teach in how to hire the best is identifying, knowing when you start to hire, knowing what you're looking for, kind of qualities that you need in someone and the end result that you're after. You work hard in your business. On the Profit by Design podcast, we ask the big question, what has your business done for you lately? Hi, I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling, the business psychologist, the author of How to Hire the Best, and your co-host on the Profit by Design podcast. Weekly, my co-host, Mike Bruno, and I bring you tips, tools, and strategies from our own experiences and from the experiences of our guests, who are entrepreneurial thought leaders and real-life entrepreneurs, all to support you in making intentionally profitable and sustainable business decisions to live the lifestyle you desire. At Tap the Potential, we know you're longing to be freed from the constant demands of your business. You need a business that supports your life. And the problem is your business is taking over your life, leaving you frustrated and discouraged. We get it. At Tap the Potential, we believe work supports life, not the other way around. We understand you're paying a team and most likely you're still having to do it all. There should be accountability. It should not be this hard, which is why through our proprietary coaching system, we help thousands of business owners like you have more time for what's important to them and grow profit by 300 to 800%. Here's how we do it. Start by taking our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. You'll get an overview of your current quality of life as it relates to your business and next steps needed in your business to improve your quality of life while strengthening your business. Next, meet with our success team lead to debrief your results. Then join our Better Business, Better Life program. By the end of your first year with us, you will have more time for what matters to you and more money in your bank account than you've ever had before. So if you're ready to take your life back, the next step is to take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. Profit designers, at Tap the Potential, we are on a mission right now to be a positive force in social media during trying times for all of us entrepreneurs. In that regard, I would love it if you could help us out. We really want to get behind any of you who are doing good things in your communities, showing up and leading with love. If you are doing something to keep your team together during this time and you're sharing it in social media, or you come across another entrepreneur who is being a gift from their gift in some way that you notice, please use the hashtags lead with love and be a gift. Our team at Tap the Potential is on the lookout in social media for those hashtags and we will be reposting those social media posts from the Tap the Potential social media. Let's all lead with love, be a gift and shine bright during these trying times. Welcome back, Dr. Sabrina. Hi, Darren. How are you? Hello. It's great to be here with the you two strategists, and we're recording the Thanksgiving episode for the Profit by Design podcast. This is fun. Yeah. So I'm aware that this podcast is going to launch or drop on Thanksgiving. So I wanted to start with what are you grateful for? Dr. Sabrina, let's start with you. Yeah. So... You know, I am grateful for our Tap the Potential team. I have been thinking about, we're coming to the end of the year, and I reflect back on all the things that have gone on this year. We started off with a bang, with a phenomenal breakthroughs retreat, and we had high, high spirits coming out of that, and then COVID. And our team went into full on, how do we support our clients? How do we support entrepreneurs through the stress of this? And we really shifted our attention and we did it while we at Tap the Potential were experiencing significant impact to our business from COVID. And so just that ability, the professionalism on our team 
to show up and be there, be a gift from our gifts and to support others the way we have come together and supported each other on the personal side through the challenges that we've experienced this past year. And also as we are supporting our clients through this is my gratitude. And I, in particular, extending just beyond our team, but really to the whole entire tap, the potential family of business owners. So many of our clients are out there supporting their teams, creating safe, supported work environments. You know, there's through the election, there's just been so much stress out there for people. And our business owners in the Better Business, Better Life program are so intent on creating great places to work and leading with love and being a gift from their gifts with their teams and their families and in their communities. I just feel like we have this big network that's spreading good things out there. And that is my gratitude. That's a lot to be grateful for. Heck yeah. Yeah. And to your credit, you know, your leadership and taking you know, the lemons that life presented us with the pandemic as it was beginning to explode in the U.S. in March and through that and building resilience and helping us stay focused. You did an amazing job with that. And so for me, the impact on me personally has been, this is okay. Like it's not really going to affect me. And I'm very grateful for that. And I know a lot of people are not necessarily in that situation. So that's allowed me to be in a different place. Darren, how about you? Well, I'll try to consolidate because I think (laughs) there are so many things. And I could easily say ditto to what Dr. Sabrina said. But I want to focus in on something that's been around and tapped the potential for a while now and, and that we've had some small changes here and there made. But, you know, I'm thankful for the immutable laws of tap the potential. I think they impact our team in very positive ways. They're inspiring. They encourage us all to lead with love, be a better person, and to strive to do things for the betterment for ourselves, our clients, our families. And it's just so positive to have those types of immutable laws in our company. And it really helps to create the culture that we have at Tap the Potential. And on a personal note, you know, One of the hardest struggles I've had with COVID-19 is the separation from family, from the people that I love. And I just would like to express this Thanksgiving, how thankful I am for my family. And that's just important to me. So. Yeah. And I think that is sentiment that so many people are experiencing right now, that we're not able to be with family in the way that we're accustomed to being during this time. And it's very hard. And so... I think our gratitude practice is key to resiliency and to just being able to go forward through this difficult time and keep, I think it's important that we keep the focus on the greater, the bigger picture that we are coming together as a country, try to restore health and keep everyone healthy and safe during this time. And as much as it's painful for us on an individual basis, not to be with our families in the way that we want to be. We're doing the hard things as leaders. We're making those hard decisions that are for the greater good. And I just want to acknowledge everyone out there who is doing that and who is experiencing the other side of that, which is loss and loss of some tradition and connection. That's really important. So on our team, gratitude is a big deal. We put a lot of emphasis on gratitude practice And Darren, you personally have been a big part of that, bringing that spirit into our team and into the work that we do with our clients. So I want to give you the opportunity to talk about how we weave a gratitude practice in, in what we're doing. Yeah, certainly. You know, I just, like I said, I mentioned the immutable laws and, you know, the immutable laws, you know, we talk about lead with love, be a gift from your gifts, and they're all encompass a feeling of gratitude in my mind. And, you know, when you lead with love, you're leading with gratitude too, because it's hard not to be thankful for someone that you're loving, right? That you care about. And so I just seek very common to, for our team members with us being virtual, we're all in different locations throughout the United States, but it's very common for us to express gratitude for each other and for the things that each of us are doing in the company. And it's very refreshing, right? Because 
it's so possible in other business cultures where there's a lot of a blame game going on or strife within the company. And so if we can just lead with love, have a spirit of gratitude about the people that we work with, the people that we interact with throughout our day, it's just so important for that company culture, I think. And I think it comes through in how we serve our clients. And I just see that as a very positive for our company. Absolutely. You know, one of our rituals is we start many meetings off talking about wins and successes. And Darren said in one of our meetings, he said, what about if we shift and change it up a little bit and we talk about our gratitudes? And so that's been a big part of getting us to just be more focused on gratitude. And gratitude is so important because as entrepreneurs, we're always focusing on what's wrong. (laughs) What are the problems? You know, what are the things that are not going right? And in the midst of all those things that feel like they're going wrong or sliding off the rails, there's a lot going right. And one of the books that I read a few years ago, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F, (laughs) that wonderful title, Someone was asking me about it the other day. They said, I'm thinking about reading this book. And I said, oh yeah, I read it. It was really good. And I said, what was it about? And I'm like, I can't remember. <laughs> and so it was, it's, it bothered me for a few days. I'm like, this book left a really good impression on me, but I can't remember the specific takeaway because a lot of times I will read and it just kind of gets absorbed in you know, my knowledge of just overall things. And what came to me is there is something very important in that book that I took from it. And that is that The problems that we are dealing with today are the result of the things that we wanted and wished for a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. So a lot of the problems that we entrepreneurs have are those good problems to have. And so, you know, like on our team, we're dealing with capacity. (laughs) You know, we want more clients. We want to have more people in our Better Business, Better Life program. We want to be helping more entrepreneurs have better lives and have better businesses. And so that's what we've wished for. We visioned it. We've been working towards it. And now, you know, in our team discussion this week, we were talking about, okay, we need to think through in 2021, how we're going to handle the demand that we're experiencing for our program. That's a good problem to have. So I just would encourage all of you listening to kind of put that perspective on some of the challenges in front of you. You know, I have big changes going on in my personal life that are very positive, but there's also, you know, life change is stressful for my kids. And so dealing with that, I look at that and I think these are challenges. They are the result of something that I wanted, (laughs) something good. So good things bring new challenges. And that's how we keep learning and growing. Darren and Stacey, I'm curious for both of you, if you could speak to what have you learned about gratitude in the recent year? It's a good question. I was sitting here thinking like, what's different for me? And I think it's about being specific. You know, I am not one who judges my life and changes and events in my life is negative or positive on a whole, right? So what's different to me is being specific about what I'm grateful for, right? I can say I'm grateful for sunshine. Like sunshine really makes me happy. I don't like heat. I have preferences, right? But I can be really grateful that no matter what's happening in the world, the sun is still going to come up. And today may be a little rainier than yesterday. It's not, it's actually sunny today. (laughs) It's just recognizing what is unique and special about a particular moment, event, or thing, or experience. So what you and I talked about a few weeks ago was I really enjoy special fall mornings outside You know, when it's cooler, maybe a little foggy with a cup of coffee, it's around 50, 46 to 50 degrees. It's just cool enough and crisp enough. There's a change in the air. Like, so looking at those specific details that bring joy or pleasure or that umami, you know, just that feel good kind of moment. So that's what I've noticed. Because I could put a blanket statement across everything 
and say, it's great. I have a great life. Well, what do I really like about my life? So that's what it is. You know, it's 2020 has really brought home the fact that in this life, there's one thing that's constant, and that is change. And the best way to live our life is to have gratitude in the moment, because when those changes come, that chance to be thankful for that thing or that person might not come again. And so that has been very much on my mind this year, you know, and there's been times to where I've had opportunities to focus on the things that I'm grateful for more so than I think even in past years, because there's been times that I've just been like, this is going on, this is going on, this is going on. I go, I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful I had this, that moment um, with my son on that fishing trip this summer. I'm thankful that I got to get my daughter a kitten for her birthday this year. And, you know, there's just so many things like that. And I just, it's important to acknowledge those things that we're grateful for because it allows us to express and understand our gratitude for even more things that we have in our life. Very well said. So let's dig in to the new book, which just launched. How to Hire the Best, The Entrepreneur's Ultimate Guide to Attracting Top Performing Team Members. So we're here to talk about the last chapters in the book. And I'm just really excited that we have the two of you here because you coach our clients through this material all the time. And you have such a great perspective on how our clients experience these challenges and what the solutions really look like when they're implemented. So. Well, so the last conversation that you and I were having, we were talking about culture. And so putting it in perspective of what we do, which is all about strategy and pumpkin planning, we've been talking about building the culture and building the internal organization that an A player would want to come work for. And so now that we've got Darren on the call to talk about this, I wanted to talk about how we go about finding them. Like what's the process for attracting the A players to an organization. So where do we look? You know, let's tell our story of how I've attracted these two A players. I always tell this story, Darren, I want you to tell this story because you were the first, besides Donna Krebs and Donna, I want to acknowledge she's been with me forever. (laughs) We go back at least 13 years now. So Donna was my first hire as a virtual assistant, and she's been with us that long. And I use the how to hire the best strategies with her. Darren came on as a team member for your four years, right? Four and a half. Four and a half now. Okay. So how did you come to be working here at Tap the Potential, Darren? Well, I refer to it fondly as my favorite job interview. So I was at a Grow Biz conference here in Casper, Wyoming, where I live, and Dr. Sabrina was a presenter and she also had a booth there and I attended her presentation and had some questions afterwards. And so over the course of the two days, I stopped by her booth and Dr. Sabrina several times and we talked a lot about books and books that we have read. And we found quite a few that we had both read and just had a really great conversation throughout the two days. And And I remember Sabrina saying to me, as the second day came to a close, you know, I kind of came by just to kind of say, hey, it was good to meet you and talk with you. And and she tells me, Darren, I'm curious, would you be interested in going to work with me at my company, working towards doing some business coaching? And I said, oh, yeah, I'd be very interested in that. And and so a few months went by and we got on the phone and talked about the opportunity that my position at Tap the Potential has changed significantly since I first started, but we talked about the opportunity. It was very part-time to start with. It was mostly focused on doing the sales calls. The very first sales call that I got with the first lead that we got, I called and and talked to them about everything. And and I called Sabrina after I got off the call and I said, I said, okay, Dr. Sabrina, I, that one's sold. What are we doing now? And she says, you sold that one? And I said, yeah, I sold that one and it was great. And they're going to be great people to, to work with. And, and so that's kind of how that went, how, you know, like I said, it's my favorite job interview of all time. So 
And by the way, I believe that client was with us three and a half years. So it wasn't just that you sold, you know, somebody who's going to work with us for a few months, but you brought in a client that we got to the privilege of working with for that long of a period of time. So how do you attract your A players? I want to unpack some things that Darren shared in this story, because this is how you attract your A players. So A players hang together. If you're an A player business owner, you're doing the A player things that business owners do. You're going to conferences, you're networking, you're talking to people. And so I was presenting, I was ironically on profit first at this conference. And what impressed me about Darren is that he came by the booth multiple times and every time he was telling me about a different book that he read. And that immediately caught my attention. I was like, wow, he reads a lot of business books. This guy is curious. He's motivated. And then, you know, just the types of books he was reading were books that we recommend or that I had been recommending to clients and that I had read. So I could see there was some overlap in the interests. Not only did he come by the booth a lot, but after the event, he continued to stay in contact with me. We connected on LinkedIn. I think you messaged me a few times. I intentionally stayed in contact with you. And what Darren doesn't know is on the other side of things, I was working with my own business coach who was telling me, you need to hire a salesperson. And I was like, oh no, I'm not hiring anybody in my business. I got this. (laughs) I don't want to be my first. What the pain of employees, because that's what I coach my team my clients through. I don't need that in my life. And so my business coach said, it's going to be easier than you think. Trust me. And, you know, and he got me, and this is why coaches need coaches. We all have our own stuff. And he got me to unpack what I really needed someone to do for me and what someone who could do really well in the sales role could do. And then he asked me, who do you know? And I said, well, there's this guy that I met at this conference and he does sales in another position, but he just really impressed me with, you know, the congruency. And so I brought Darren on and, you know, there's, when you make your first hire with a team member, I remember that feeling of I'm responsible for another person now, man. And I also remember when I I was out mowing my grass (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> one afternoon, I have those of you who have ever been to my home, I have six acres, I have a lot of grass to mow. So one afternoon, I was out mowing my grass. And I got a, a message from Darren. And it was a message of, hey, things are changing with the, the full time job I have, I would really like more opportunity to do more at tap the potential is that opportunity available. And I just went, oh, my gosh, you know, and I just felt this, I wanted that responsibility, but I was scared too. Cause what if we couldn't produce that? What if there wasn't enough work for both of us? And so it was this big leap, but those are the moments, Stacey, you and I talked about this on a previous episode. Those are those inflection points that really help us to grow as entrepreneurs, because in terms of making it work, Darren was as much a part of making it work as I was. Darren really has always been very motivated around, you know, what we do at Tap the Potential. And he just dug in, he gave his best, I gave my best, and we started growing from there. So, you know, how you attract A players, you show up where they are, and you pay attention to your immutable laws. One of our immutable laws at Tap the Potential is always be learning. Mistakes are learning opportunities. We're a team of learners. And Darren exhibited that. And I thought, hey, this could be a great opportunity. And so to that end, Stacey, I want to invite you to talk about how you came to be working at Tap the Potential. Well, as I was listening to Darren talk about his story, I was trying to really remember you and I, well, I had joined the Profit First Professionals Organization back in 2016 beginning of the year. And I had a, an accounting or bookkeeping company that I had started in middle of 2015. And you and I connected through Profit First and worked on a small project together. And immediately you started referring to me as an A player. And I thought, well, sounds really great, but I'm not so sure. You were totally convinced Stacy is an A player. So I just kept showing up the way you saw me, honestly. And because I liked that feedback and that's who I wanted to be. It's so you get a little touched. You can see my eyes tearing up on that. 
And then we ended that project together, but stayed connected. And I was trying to grow the accounting and bookkeeping company. But the truth is, I'm not a bookkeeper and I shouldn't be. And it was really getting in my way of doing what I do best and really showing up fully as myself. And that's as a strategist. So I'm very you know, appreciative that I have all of that experience, but I was on a sales call. Here's exactly how it happened, Sabrina. I was on a sales call with a fantastic lead. It was um, an incubator out of New York. And she had probably 500 small business startup clients that needed accounting and profit first services. And for two years, I've been seeking a partnership like this, and it would have been absolutely perfect. And here I am having the sales call, and I'm in tears with this perfect ideal client attached to 500 perfect ideal clients telling them I don't want to do their work. And I'm having this out-of-body like experience where I'm hearing the words come out of my mouth. like, And I'm thinking, this is not what's supposed to happen here. You're supposed to be asking for this work. And I'm telling her why I can't do this work. And I thought, I got to pay attention to this. I'd been struggling, struggle. I was on that struggle bus completely. And I couldn't see a way to give up doing the accounting work and be a strategist. I thought they went hand in hand. And I just was so stopped in being able to serve that it wasn't working. And that was the big moment where I thought, I have to listen to this and I need to stop. And do you know, two days later, I get a phone call from Donna Lyons, who says, Sabrina is looking to expand her operation, and she's interested in hiring strategists. Are you interested? It's a no-brainer. This is what I need to do. That's the real story. Yeah. And so let's unpack the strategy here, because again, I was in a situation where I knew I needed to grow, but... I didn't want to hire. (laughs) Darren and I were doing just fine. The two of us with Donna, it was all going good. (laughs) We didn't want to rock the boat any. And I had a conversation with Donna Lyons and she said, it's time. (laughs) You've got to face the music here, girly. And the, you know, just talking that through with a fellow entrepreneur, I think is always so powerful because I was waiting, I was procrastinating, procrastinating and and pulling the trigger is hard. And not only did that conversation lead to me realizing I needed to grow and we were going to have to bring on another team member and it was going to need to be a strategist, but it also helped me put into documentation what had been in my mind the whole time is that the people that we need to tap the potential to serve our clients are not going to be me. They're not going to be the psychologist necessarily, but there's what we do. I need to systematize it and I need to be able to train people. So I had to document before I could even reach out to you and before Donna even contacted you, Stacy. in those two days, I was documenting our apprentice strategist program, like how I would bring someone in from ground level and get them to the place where you guys are coaching now our clients in groups and delivering results and following our system. So I documented that in that two day period. And then Donna said to me, I think I have someone who is a pumpkin plan strategist who I think would be perfect for you. And I can't remember at that time if you were already training pumpkin plan strategists or if that was in the works too. Oh yeah, yeah. I had started, must've been towards the end of 2017 or maybe middle of the year 2018 where Donna approached me and said, would you be interested in helping me train strategists? So they kind of coincided around the same time, I think. Yeah, so this is again, good focused networking. Stacy was in two of my networks. She was in my profit first network and we had gotten to partner together in serving a client. So I had seen how you work. I had seen how you go the extra mile for someone who was really struggling. And that is what I'm aware of on our team with our clients. We have clients sometimes who really struggle and I wanted people, both of you go the extra mile for our clients at the drop of, you know, if it's just me messaging and saying, Hey, someone is struggling. Can you reach out? Both of you are like, I'm there. I'll do it. And that's what I needed. And the other piece was that Donna was able to speak to your skills with pumpkin planning. So you had already had a foundation in pumpkin plan. So that gave you a big leg up. 
And this is what we teach in how to hire the best is identifying, knowing when you start to hire, knowing what you're looking for, the kind of qualities that you need in someone and the end result that you're after. I had defined all of that. And the other piece about it though, which we teach in the how to hire the best book is sometimes the roles that you need to hire for in your business, there's no training, no skill set that somebody's going to come to you with all the skills that you need. And so sometimes in our businesses, we have to create our own training programs. And that's what I've done at Tap the Potential with our strategist, apprentice strategist program, which by the way, as of our team discussion this past week, we've decided we're going to be in 2021, bringing on two new apprentice strategists and training that. And we're going to be solidifying how we onboard and train and, you know, take the foundation of what I already created and just make it way more documented and focused and specific. And we have to make it more efficient this time around too. Yes, definitely need to work on that. So, you know, another piece of this was it took about five months of getting through your gauntlet to actually get to be able to work with you. So yeah, that was a lot of scheduling and I'm sure it had to do with, you know, preparing and getting ready to onboard somebody, which you did pretty well. It did, but it was also, I knew I had to have time in my schedule to make that happen, which I would encourage any entrepreneur to think about that. If you're going to bring on a team member, you really need to remember that your focus has to shift to being on that team member, that you're training and onboarding and not on taking care of clients. So I had to figure out how I was going to get the space for that to happen. And we were also making sure the revenue was there to bring you on. So that needed to happen. So there was a lot of, and this is what's really important about networking to attract your A players, you may not be able to hire them right away. I wasn't able to hire you right away. But once we moved forward with the hiring process, it was quite the gauntlet. We did a thorough interview with you. I believe you also met with Darren as part of the process. Yeah. So Darren and I had a conversation before and we did a team interview where you gave me You and Darren presented me with a business owner's challenge and I had to coach them through it. And I believe Darren was Mr. Flowers of the forest. (laughs) Yeah. And I thought after that call, I was like, this is a disaster. I can't do this. (laughs) I have no idea. I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) And so this is one of the strategies though, when it comes to interviewing, you want to present your candidate with a worst case scenario and say to them, I know you know nothing about our policies and procedures. And here's a real life situation that we've dealt with. And I want you to coach Darren, like you're coaching a business owner who is in this situation. Darren played the role of the business owner. You coached him. And what really stands out to me is So many times when we are coaching our clients and they are in a challenging situation, we, the coaches may feel like, I don't think that was effective at all. And really what's happening is you're, we're taking our clients through very muddy waters. And so it feels very choppy, very muddy. And what's more important is, is that client coming away with clarity? And are they coming away with something that moves them forward? So what Stacy reacted to when she was like, oh, this feels awful. I don't know if I did a good job is the muddy waters that she was guiding them through. They were muddy. And so, but I was watching how does Stacy conduct herself in that situation? And does she maintain her composure? Does she continue to guide and lead and be that confident guide that a business owner needs in that situation? And I saw that. And then the other thing that I saw is on the other side of it, Stacy's saying, I don't know, I have so much to learn. I feel like I just, and it was that I have so much to learn. And I was like, that's what we need. She's a learner. Yeah, totally. Definitely. And I'm a researcher. So yeah, that's my natural inclination when there's a problem or something I don't know, it's to research. So, and in that situation, there was nothing I could research. Like I have this situation and it's a real, but not real situation. And I have a person who is presenting it, who's not actually feeling that in the moment kind of emotion behind it. So it was really hard to go through and do that. I'm lucky that you recognize something that was malleable, that you could take a person and turn them into a really great strategist. And 
I have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. So I want to kind of zoom out a little bit here and talk about some other pieces that are in the chapter around how do you attract your A players? Because it's not just me networking that results in A players coming on our team. When we had our meeting this week and we talked about in 2021, we're bringing on apprentice strategists, another team member spoke up and said, okay, well, what are we looking for? And what are they going to be expected to do? And so I described the qualities of what we are looking for and what our program looks like so that everyone on our team can be putting their eyes and ears to the ground and looking for who's going to be the next two strategists that come on. But the other thing to think about is the brokers that exist in our networks. So David Burkus, he's been on the Profit by Design podcast, book Friend of a Friend, is really eye-opening to me in terms of how to network effectively in business situations. So it's not that We want to network within our networks for sure to attract A players, but we also need to go outside our networks and we need to look at within our network, who are the people who are connected to other groups that we are not connected to. So they serve as brokers and they introduce us to those other groups. And what David Burke has really taught me that I was not aware of before is that it's our distant connections who can be highly valuable to us when it comes to recruiting A players. So those individuals that we haven't talked to in years may be the very ones that we need to connect to because they get us outside of our typical network where we're kind of talking to the same people all the time. And so if you think about, if you feel like you've exhausted everybody in your network, you've been telling them about the type of person you want to hire and you know, you're know you just not getting anywhere, I think it's time to think about your distant connections, people you haven't connected to in a long time, call them up, shoot them an email, ask them how they're doing. And in the course of the conversation, just let them know that you're looking to hire and this is in the describe the kind of person you're looking for. And don't say, who do you know who's looking for work? You've got to take that out of your vocabulary. That just cannot come out. And the reason is, is because A players are hardly ever looking for work. A players move from one opportunity to the next. They're not reading job ads. And if someone is looking for work and they're reading job ads, there's a good chance there's a reason that they are out of work and that's not going to bode well for them being on your team. Now, I don't want to say that as a blanket statement because I realize right now with COVID, we have a lot of people who are out of work and looking for work. And in that situation, it's actually very different because there are A players who are unemployed. But regardless, when you're networking, the thing you want to say, you want to describe the personality characteristics of the person who would do well in the role and then say, who comes to mind? And would you be willing to make an introduction? That's all that's needed. And whether they're employed or unemployed, you will get the introduction and you will get the opportunity to talk with them. Yeah, that Dr. Sabrina, for me, that brings out one of my favorite things about how to hire the best is the fact that you're not likely to find your A players in the normal places. They're not necessarily actively going to be looking for a job. And you're absolutely right. Right now in the COVID-19 situation, there are people that are because of unemployment and such. But, and I know I've told multiple business owners, you know, when you're hiring, I've shared that with them that, you know, your A players are not necessarily looking for a job right now. So you want to look at who do you know from other businesses that have the kind of character traits that you want to have in that position. And you want to turn to your A players that are on your team already because, our popular saying around here is A players hang together, right? So they're going to know other A players that they can connect you with. That's going to make that process of hiring someone that much easier and better than the traditional ways that people hire. So, yeah. And Darren, you're making me think about a question that we get asked from time to time, which is it doesn't feel right to poach employees from another business in the word poaching taking. And so the key word here is attractive. We're not trying to poach. We don't want to go after other people's employees. The attracting means that you are attracting someone who's a good fit for your team. 
you're attracting someone from a situation that where there's not a good fit for them. And so an A player on a team where they're working from their strengths and they're on a team that aligns with their own core values, the immutable laws, they're not likely, no matter how much you offer them, they're not likely to come to work for you because they're in a good situation. And the reality is, is none of us like change. And if an A player is in a good situation, they're not likely to change because change is hard. So what you're really doing is you are talking to someone and saying, here's what I have to offer. This is what the role looks like. This is who we are as a company. We are an employer of choice. We've been recognized, you know, as a great place to work. Like we have some of our clients at Tap the Potential who are in our great place to work spotlight for various reasons. And to be able to say things like that will attract someone who's in a bad situation and they are looking to make a change or they just haven't made that change because they didn't realize there was another opportunity out there. And that's really, really what this is about. And the other piece of that is that when your team members are recruiting for you, they're not so much out there trying to poach employees either. They're sharing with their friends that they work at a really cool place. And, you know, hey, I think highly of you. I think you would really like it over here too. You might want to check this out. And if the opportunity is right, take a look at us. We have in the How to Hire the Best book, we feature business cards from Chuck Parmalee and Mike Bailey both of them have special cards that they've equipped their team members with that just say, you know, hey, we acknowledge you're doing a great job. And if you're ever interested in an opportunity, come see us. And so the team members carry that with them. And when they go out and about in the community and they experience good service somewhere, they just hand that card to the person who's giving them that good service. And it really is a nice way of acknowledging people for a job well done and that they're putting their heart into something. And it also just exposes them to, hey, there's an opportunity over here if there's ever a time that's right for you, you might want to take a look at this. Yeah. So once you've attracted the A players, how do you onboard them, Sabrina? Very carefully. Yeah. So we want to be careful with them. We don't want to scare them away. We also want to set them up for success. Like we want them to have everything they need on day one. So take us through a a high level overview of that. Even before day one. And so in the reality is in most small businesses, we hire someone and we just kind of throw them to the fire and say, here, good luck. Yep. Come ask me questions as you have them. <laughs> and, and that's not how we want to onboard A players. That's not setting them up for success. So first we want to think through what is a successful person in this role doing at the end of year one? What is this successful person in this role doing nine months from now, six months, three months, week one? day one. And so now we're laying out how you're going to know at the end of day one, if they're succeeding, which when you have all of that criteria laid out, you also are able to design your training and your onboarding experience to produce those results from that person. And that's a very thoughtful way of onboarding. That's just the technical piece though. The other side of it is creating safe and supported environment and really helping people to feel welcomed and integrate them into the team. And so we wanna be mindful of all the high points in the onboarding process and all the low points. And we wanna offset the low points and we want to create celebrations at the high points. And so what I mean by this is a low point for an example, is the first day on the job for the employee. Oftentimes they get the employee manual thrown at them. They have all kinds of paperwork to fill out either online or, you know, physically paper and pen. And they're like, their eyes are bleeding by the end of the day because of just all this procedural stuff they've dealt with. So they go home feeling very drained. So that morning they went to work full of excitement. You know, their family sends them off, you know, go get them, honey. Have a great day. (laughs) And then they show up at the end of the day and, you know, spouse is at the door. How was your day, honey? And the kids are there. How was your day? And they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. And uh, let me just go chill out for a little bit before you talk to me again. So that's a low point and you want to offset that. And so maybe one of the things that you do is you send a, a meal card or you get a, a meal delivered to the family for at the first day to celebrate the first day on the job with the new team member. And what you're doing there is you're building a relationship with the team member's family 
because that family is going to be the very family that is going to have to be supportive of that team member when you need them to work overtime or they're having to do something on the weekend out of, you know, because of some special circumstance that came up. So you really want to engage the family. But even looking at that first day, we want to not overwhelm them with paperwork and procedure. We really want to make that first day about them and welcoming them and integrating them into the team. So sitting down and having those conversations about what are your strengths? What lights you up? What gives you energy? And what are you most excited about getting into here? What are your questions? And what are you most eager to be doing here? And then starting to connect them with other team members so that they feel like they know the people and they feel a part of the team. And that's just day one. We really want to be thinking about the entire onboarding as going through the first year. That's a very sensitive, critical period. There tends to be a lot of turnover during the first year. And if you've done all this work to attract an A player, you sure don't want to lose them in that first year. So, and I I talk about this in the book, all the different things that you want to attend to in that first year with them. Yeah. So I'm really sort of awestruck with the fact that it needs to, but is ideal if it continues throughout the entire year. So I'm thinking about my first year and all the little things that you did wasn't necessarily on day one, but you know, within the first few weeks and then a few months later, and you did sprinkle things, just little thank yous. One of the big ones that I remember getting was my wind chimes. Like that was such a big deal. I don't even know why you sent it. It may have been just a milestone in the year long process, but what a great memory just getting this unexpected gift. I don't remember why I sent it either, but I do remember my thought behind it is that you have a patio area outside of your home that you were decorating and I wanted to give you something that you would enjoy and that would just be a peaceful experience for you to enjoy. So that's the kind of thing that we're talking about. You want to customize the gifts to the person that you're giving them Mm -hmm. to and be really thoughtful in getting to know your team members. And the other thing that I want to share is in the How to Hire the Best book, we do walk through all the considerations for the onboarding process. It is such an important part of the experience with your A players that we have created an entire course on onboarding to walk business owners and their leaders through how to onboard team members. You can get more information on that at tapthepotential.com forward slash onboarding. Christine Era of Core Growth Strategies, who has integrated all of the how to hire the best strategy in her business. And she's given such great attention to the onboarding experience. She's taken everything that I teach And she and I are coming together and we are sharing, she's showing you an inside look into how they use these tools at core. And we're going to give you all these templates and kind of create a done for you experience as we walk you through designing your onboarding experience in that course. So that is coming in 2021. And so I feel like that's so important because we put all this attention on attracting A players and we are really remiss if we don't support business owners on engaging them and keeping them engaged throughout. Yeah, that's a really good point. Darren, I see you leaning forward. What are you thinking? number of things. I'm very interested. I know you guys talked on a prior podcast about the chapter five, which is about the company culture. But I'm very aware, as we've talked about chapter six and chapter seven and eight, how company culture flows through all of that, right? It's your company culture that's going to attract the A players to your company. It's the company culture that's going to help onboard a new A player to your company. And so I'm just very aware of how important that creating that culture is and how important the immutable laws are in creating that culture as well. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. Just something, an idea or a thought sparked in my head as I was hearing you talk about the immutable laws and how it shows up. And so you did all these little things for me. I assume you did the similar little things for Darren when he was new and that that will continue. But we often do the things that we appreciate the most. And so there's, I'm aware that there's a difference. I tend not to give gifts 
but I give affirmations and encouragement. And so that just popped into my head. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be something tangible. You know, it could be just the recognition, just that recognition of Stacy's an A player, this person is an A player. Calling it out, appreciating what a person does is another way to show that. Now you're getting into something that I'm really eager to explore in 2021, which is the love languages apply to team members. And Melissa on our team actually brought it to my attention that in the love language series, there is a book about team members. And I can't remember the exact title right now, but we need to be aware that our team members have their own love languages. Stacy is telling me hers is words of affirmation. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. And so every team member wants to be appreciated in a different way. And it's very important to take the time to discover what is meaningful to each of your team members and being able to express that appreciation. So that just, you know, we've said it over and over, those one-to-one meetings are so valuable and so important because that's how we get to know each other and come to understand. That's how I knew that Stacy would enjoy wind chimes. I mean, because I had a one-to-one conversation. I knew what was going on in her world. Because <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a random gift, you know? <laughs> Yeah, but the, it has so much more meaning, honestly, you know, that you did hear it and picked up on something I hadn't even been aware that I'd been talking about or mentioned. And yeah, so that's just a little piece of you living from your core values. Yeah. So I think one of the things as we wrap up our conversation today that is particularly fun in the How to Hire the Best book is our bonus chapter. (laughs) And this is a little sneak peek into our Tap the Potential team. I had someone, not me, interview each of you, and I had no idea what you were going to say. But what we did is we have a survey that we give to our clients, A player team members, and we ask them about how they experience working in that particular business and how they experience the business owner ways that the business owner can grow and improve. And so I thought, wouldn't it be fun to have our team members respond to those same types of questions and share really what it's like to work in the Tap the Potential team? Because, you know, here we are teaching all this stuff. It does no good if we don't walk our talk. And so we have an interview with Darren in chapter eight. We have an interview with Stacy, Rochelle, Melissa, Amy speaking to what it really feels like to be on the Taft Potential team. And there's very, there's different perspectives. I had no idea what was going to be said in those interviews. We edited them for clarity, but we didn't take anything out. So, you know, the good, the bad, it's all there in chapter eight as a way of just giving that sneak peek for our readers. I can't wait to read it. Yeah, I know. (laughs) I do remember being asked the questions. I don't remember what I said. So I have to go back and read it. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to see it. So I just want to share with our listeners and remind you that How to Hire the Best is available for sale now. If you haven't gotten your copy, it'd be a great time to go get it, especially over the Thanksgiving holiday. You can go to howtohirethebest.com and it takes you straight to the link where you can purchase the book on Amazon. Awesome, Sabrina. Thank you. And thank you, Darren and Stacy. And I hope you guys are, by the time this episode drops, that you're having a wonderful, peaceful Thanksgiving celebration. I hope the same for you guys too. It will definitely be peaceful for me. We're all celebrating via Zoom. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Zoom. (laughs) 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 All right, guys. Thank you, guys. If your business is taking over your life and you're ready to take your life back, Tap the Potential's Better Business, Better Life program could be just what you're looking for. By the end of your first year in our program, you will have more time for what matters to you and more money in your bank account than ever. Get started. Take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. Thank you for spending time with us today. Join our conversation in the Profit by Design podcast Facebook group. Share your thoughts on today's episode, ask us questions, and let us know what you want to hear about next. 
Visit our website at ProfitByDesignPodcast.com to access resources from our sponsors and tools we've created for you. Subscribe to the show on whatever platform you're listening to right now. There's a subscribe button right there. Go ahead and hit it so that you always get a notification when we release a new episode. And finally, share our podcast with a friend if you know a friend who would enjoy it. Thanks again for listening. This is Real Life Business. Keep your chin up. Keep moving forward. You got this.